righteousness then, as you would see in the notes, if you want to pull this up on the website, and I put these new, these new notes for these, the ones that I don't include in my books, <clears throat> the, the studies that I don't include in the books under re recent articles on the website stand in the gap. So always righteousness is pointed at something you do. Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter heaven. Uh, that we might serve him in, f in fear and holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives in Luke one seventy five, The righteousness of God is revealed from heaven from faith to faith, uh, Romans one seventeen. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness of sin, but present them to God as being alive from the dead and your, your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Because you're going to reap what you sow. You can't continue to trample the blood because it's dependent upon your deeds, if, if you've ever come to a real salvation to begin with. Do you not know to who you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slave to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So it's something that you do. In Romans 8, 4, it talks about that the righteous requirements of the law might be filled in, fulfilled in us, the righteous requirements of the law to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and neighbors, or self, and that fulfills all the law and the commandments might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, because you put the flesh to death. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not appearing to a bunch of things and Sabbaths and new moons and days and months and rituals. No, or circumcision. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. You're right. Your conscience is clear before God. You're walking in virtue, in purity, and uprightness towards everyone, towards your, your fellow man and towards God. That you were, uh, you put on the new man, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. In the breastplate of righteousness, bear the fruits of righteousness, <clears throat> follow after righteousness, suffer for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those who are persecuted for what? Righteousness, not for filthy rags. You're not going to be persecuted for filthy rags. Although some, it's getting so bad in our society now that even people that profess to be a Christian are being persecuted just for being professing to be a Christian, even though their testimony is filthy rags. It's, it's so sad. And of course, 1 John 3, 7 and 8, little children, let no one deceive you. Let no one anybody beguile you with, with those enticing words, as I mentioned before, that paralegizomai, which is the opposite of reasoning. See, legizomai is taken from the Greek word logos. Well, why is it taken from that? See, the first part of it, logizomai. <clears throat> because loga, logos, of course, is the word of God, the word made flesh. Of course, it refers to that, but it also re refers to reasoning, to thinking, to understanding. It also refers to those things. That's the reason it was, take, it was taken from that. It's just, just as I point out in the notes here, he says, uh, see, it's, it's the word taking from logos, so a false reasoning becomes a beguilement to the mind and reverses the truth, and makes it a deadly, turns it into a deadly error. So there we have it, the biblical righteousness of faith that we walk in if we're going to inherit the kingdom of God. You can't have your past sins remitted by some righteous or some appearance or some sacrifice, only by the blood of Christ. But we still have to obey the truth from our heart and come clean in repentance or we'll never be reconciled by the blood of Christ. So like I said, call it what you wish. But the whole thing is dependent upon you being a worker together with God. You're not doing it all yourself. All through the process of repentance, if you've come through a real repentance, the Spirit is working. You've purified your heart by obedience to the truth through the Spirit. Godly sorrow that worketh repentance always through the Spirit. So it's always God working together, outstretching His hand, not willing any should perish, calling and drawing all men to Him. To him. That's the way it works, or it doesn't work at all. So we responding in our faithfulness, producing the deeds worthy of repentance, is a right action that's acceptable to him, and God knows if, if it's the right action because he searches the heart and he tests the mind of every individual who comes to him by this faith, 
Then he can accept that faith if it's genuine and sincere and authentic as the righteousness to be justified. As we said, righteousness, dudakasune, means just. Cornelius was a just man. Somewhere along the line, he came to a, a righteousness of faith and was accepted by God. It doesn't tell us where. Anywhere in the scriptures, it just introduces us to him in Acts chapter 10. But that's what happens. So the scripture says, then the just man lives by his faithfulness to God, as it says. So this legizomai, meaning to reckon or account, it can also be translated in many other different ways as think, suppose. Uh, in this, it's, I show in the notes, it's translated in all different types of ways. Here in my notes, he says he was reckoned or numbered among the transgressors. Uh, even the goddess Diana should be despised. That's the same word, legizomai. Is there some kind of transfer that took place there? So we conclude that a man is justified by faith in Romans 3. Conclude. Uh, I reckon that this present suffering is not worth to be compared to the glory to come. He esteems anything to be unclean. It's unclean. Love thinks no evil. Yeah, think is, is translated many places. Again, because it's derived from logos, is to think and to reason. Like God says, come, let us reason together. He's not an unreasonable being. See, there's not this, this unreasonableness that he's going to justify you in your ungodliness and you're going to remain that way and you can never overcome sin. So these are some of the ways that it's translated in the scriptures. So it can't mean only one solid thing like these phony theologians are telling you, these flesh kings, these big shots. That that means that it's deposited into your account or he rips the pages out of your book and puts the pages of Jesus in like those heretics say on the promise keepers. No, that isn't what it means at all because of where the word was derived from, how it's used, being the opposite of it being para as exactly what they do, beguile your mind into, into a false understanding. And that's exactly the way it comes out. See, this false understanding, as he says, let no one beguile you with enticing words. He says, beguile then means to deceive by false reasoning and false reckoning. See, when they impute or reckon a person righteous who is in reality unrighteous, they are deceptively manipulating the words, exactly what they're doing, misusing Scripture, in order to create a premise that don't exist. The person is not righteous unless they're actually producing righteous deeds. Like John says, he who does what is right is righteous as he is righteous. Just as Jesus walked, you're walking. And like I said, it's, it's interesting then that the derivative of that coming from Logos, showing the opposite paralegizomai to beguile, and that's exactly what they do. They take the reasoning of God, twist it and divert it, invert it, I mean, the ver and get the very opposite meaning out of it. And that's what they keep doing. And that's why you've got to have a magic new nature imputed to you, and he's got to clean you up, and he's got to magically do this and that for you. But you still sin, as I've said in all my lessons. All these people we deal with, they still sin. And by sin, they mean any sin. They mean any sin. They think they're easily forgiven by confessing 1 John 1, 9 and the advocacy with the Father and that Jesus is going to go in there and remind, remind his Father that he took the punishment and he can't punish him no more. You see, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's not what the advocacy means. That's not what the office of high priest is to do, to keep reapplying the blood over and over again. You can't trample the blood underfoot and treat it as the blood of an animal that cannot take away sin. It has to take away sin once and for all in a cleansing that occurred in the process of repentance. And you come out of that then just, justified, upright, full of virtue and integrity so you can add to your faith. You can't add to a virtue to a faith that wasn't already faithfulness and purity to begin with. Okay? See, they have nothing to add to. That's the reason they never seem to get it. So that's the study on what righteousness is in the scriptures. Now again, you can pull down these notes and you can study them yourself. Send me the questions if you wish. And I hope I've presented it in a manner in which you can clearly understand what it means to be pronounced just 
after you've come faithfully to God through a repentance that produced deeds worthy. Do so and you'll live.